Greetings, this is August 14th at 12.30 p.m. I've got a recent update uh, from 10 a.m. this morning from the TNRD and you want to check the links below and grab that uh, PDF yourself, pull it up on the screen and take a look in detail. If we take a look at the northern flank, you can see it's encroached upon Hutchinson Lake. Jim Lake, Pressy Lake, and it does look like it's uh, gone over and to the northeast of Young Lake. So grab the PDF, uh, verify your position, know your escape routes, and gather your resources. We can see that uh, it's following a northeastern tendency. And if we go to the middle section of the Elephant Hill fire perimeter, I want to draw your attention to the eastern flank and you can see it almost looks like tongues of fire have gone northwards, northeastwards, and each of these small outlying areas where we have seen hot spots in the past, you want to validate and substantiate where that fire is moving. So gather information from multiple sources. One of them is the wind, and now we're taking a look at windy. It's coming actually from the west in this position at Big Bar at about five kilometers an hour. And as you'll see on your lower left, it's it's rolling kind of from the southwest. It goes up over the hill at Loon Lake, and then it comes back down and heads from the northwest on the other side. If we look at the forecast, not much variation in wind velocity, uh, continuing cloud cover until Wednesday, May, Thursday morning, uh, an increase slightly in the wind, and look for these meandering direction changes, uh, gusts in the ridge lines, uh, at the edges of plateaus, in gullies, in valleys, you will have variation. This is a satellite image of the smoke patterns from NOAA and you can see it's a swath covering uh, Western Canada, Central Canada and if we zoom in on the NASA map for August 12th this is where the difficulty in viewing really came about on the 12th we were socked in with smoke and now the weather has changed so these are more or less the last valid infrared that we can determine. There is some infrared coming through at this time and it's very spotty, sparse, depending on the cloud cover in the area. Let's take a look. Uh, we're looking at the central region of BC, the Caribou interior, and you can see a lot of spots where those lightning strikes occurred last night uh, to the east of 100 Mile House. We see uh, extensive activity in the north uh, of Highway 20, and there's not a lot appearing in the Elephant Hill wildfire perimeter. This is zooming in again looking at those lightning strikes to the east of 100 Mile House around Canham Lake. So again, you want to verify your position. You want to know where you are in relation to a moving firehead. Now we're going to a... This is the AVHRR maps. Uh, high intensity and we're seeing the area in the caribou showing up but we're not getting indication of the Elephant Hill wildfire. Uh, this map is showing a certain type of data called the M3 hotspots and they're the ones that we've been relying on. They're just not coming in for the region that we're concerned with at this time. Now we're going to a, a another type of thermal map. It's measuring uh, kilowatt energy, and as you can see, uh, the region at the center of the screen, that green dot, that is where the Elephant Hill wildfire is, and there's not a lot of energy being picked up by the satellite. So let's go to another source. This is the Sheridan uh, Highway Cam by DriveBC. And this was a view 
uh, approximately an hour ago and I've come back and taken another shot and the smoke density appears to be increasing. There's so many variable factors, uh, a lowering wind speed, settling smoke, uh, humidity packing it down. These are factors that you'll have to weigh into it, but this cam system lets us see on the ground kind of what's happening uh, in every minute or two minutes it refreshes so we can get an idea of where the smoke is moving to and what may be in the area this is another good system this is uh, the fire data from the RCAC uh, in the United States it's uh, providing you access to all of the infrared uh, information out there the MODIS, the VIIRS and you can get the KML bundle and uh, that's the key markup language bundle and load it into Google Earth and see this for yourself. So this is the hot spots that they're showing today and as you see 99% of them are all within the last 24 hours. There's no 6 or 12 hour indications popping up. They look like squares because that's the variation where the hot spot could be. Uh, it could be within 500 meters to a kilometer of the indicated dot. We're pulling back, looking at the overall view, and now we're going to zoom in and look at the area around Highway 99, Highway 97. This is the indicated heat on this system over the last 24 hours. Again, uh, I've been showing you a more streamlined version that allows you to see more terrain. This is what's available at this time through uh, MODIS and the AVHRR system. Here we are looking at the southern flank and you can see around the Boston Flats area to the lower left of your screen and around the Cache Creek Hills area in the upper right portion of your screen. Now we're zooming back a little bit so we can see that eastern flank and its uh, approach towards Dead Man River and I'm not seeing any additional encroachment into the river valley. It's all kind of held at the ridgeline. However, lots of intensity around Hyheum and there is also intensity around Upper Loon Lake, uh, north towards the Bonaparte, uh, around Young Lake, and we can see that flash that headed up onto the Fraser Plateau and is approaching Green Lake and uh, Jim Lake, Pressy Lake, and those areas. This is a uh, zoom in uh, towards Hyheum, and you can see that red dot right in the center. That's the only uh, 6 to 12 hour dot that is showing up at this time. I'm going to keep on monitoring it, refreshing, and seeing if new hot spots show up in this area. Uh, here is a zoom back looking at Green Lake at the top of your screen, 70 mile house uh, towards the left hand side. And this is kind of the last visual that we were able to get from infrared. And here again is the TNRD bulletin, August 14th. And you can see that their perimeter of the fire has moved extensively north. Uh, it looks like tongues of flame that have moved forward. Uh, I do not know the state of the fire, whether it's raging, whether it's smoldering, and uh, you'll have to follow the updates below from the official sources to get the most recent information at this time. Be safe, everyone.